we're on. Hopefully, I'm trying not to squeak this chair too much. Hi, it's Laura Lee. Excited to be bringing you another video explaining NFTs and gaming or crypto gamification, if you will. In this video, we're gonna go over what are NFTs, how NFTs work in gaming, the play to earn gaming model, guilds, interoperability, and what NFT games to get started with in 2022. I'm also answering some questions from my last NFT video. So if you are skeptical or bullish on NFT gamification, be sure to hit subscribe and stick around for that. This chair is very squeaky. First, what are NFTs? NFTs or non-fungible tokens are digital assets secured on a blockchain with unique identification codes and metadata that distinguish them from each other. Unlike cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, each token is unique or non-fungible. If you would like a more in-depth introduction into the core principles of NFT and gaming, be sure to check out this video first. So NFTs are already making their mark on the gaming industry. In 2021, we saw games like Axie Infinity and Gods Unchained explode in popularity and market value. NFT games, also called crypto games or blockchain games, offer several key advantages, including transfer of ownership, enhanced security, transparency, unique creative and branding opportunities, all sorts of things. And tokenizing of in-game items enables players' providence over characters, commodities, special abilities, and other tradable objects in games. And most importantly, they allow players to generate additional income from gaming. In gaming, we are seeing NFTs used a few different ways. First, and probably mo the most common way, is by tokenizing assets in the game. For example, in Axie Infinity, each Axie is a unique NFT. These tokenized items usually give the owner some kind of power up or advantage. In these types of games, players can also mint NFTs themselves as well. This is different to traditional gaming, where the game developer is the only one that can add new items or characters to a game. Unlike traditional in-game purchases, when you purchase an NFT item, you have true ownership over that item and can trade it as you wish and cash it out into real, real world or fiat currency, not in store credits or game credits. Similarly, if the game ceased to exist, you would still own those NFT items in your wallet. And if you understand how to use these features that we've talked about so far, they all put more power in the hands of the gamer, in my opinion. Obviously, the developers have benefits too, but so far it's all looking pretty Gucci. Now getting into the features that are the most controversial and those are the play to earn and interoperability. I got a lot of comments like these, so I thought I would focus on these nuances specifically. The biggest pushback by far was with the play to earn model and the fear that NFTs will actually just make all games pay to win. And what does this mean? So gaming is traditionally play to win, where users win based on skill. For example, in Zelda, there is nothing you can buy in the game to help you level up and win. The only way to beat the game is with skill and time and maybe Googling some things. In contrast, in the pay to win model, the only way to beat a game is to pay for in-game items. And obviously a lot of people don't wanna devote their time to games that turn out to be pay to win. This is where we get into the new play to earn model. In the play to earn model, Players trade NFT items to earn in-game rewards and cryptocurrency that can be exchanged for fiat currency. So in short, the more you play, the more skilled you become, presumably. The more NFTs you collect, the more real world income you earn. The NFTs you collect are sold to other players in an NFT marketplace. And this creates a gamer economy within the game that is actually largely independent of the developer. And the fear is that such a marketplace will just enable developers to make more games pay to win. And this sentiment exists because of the very real reason that players who are new to a game can just go to a marketplace and buy NFT items that give them gameplay advantage, and that makes them appear more skilled than they actually are. And I don't think that NFTs will by default turn a game into pay to win. Even though you can swoop in and buy items that give you an advantage, you still need skill to win these games and you, you can't buy 
buy that skill. And additionally, someone had to put in the hours to earn that NFT in the first place. So the gaming ecosystem remains balanced in that sense. For example, in Axie Infinity, you could pay for better axes, but you still need skill and research to actually win and make money in that game. And I'm sure that some games will turn into pay to win and it won't work out, but NFTs are not a death sentence on their own. Like I said a million times before on this channel, we are super early days into NFTs. Not every single one is going to be a winner, but I think that the technology is here to stay. So related to play to earn, we are also seeing gaining popularity of play to earn guilds. Guilds help new players get started by kind of renting in-game assets. And as the lender, the guild receives a percentage of the player's earnings while he or she gets started gaming. And you know, guilds aren't for everybody, but they do lower the barrier to entry for NFT gaming. So I wanted to mention them. I have never joined a guild myself, but a popular one is YGG. They support all of these games and I will leave a link to their website in this in the description if you want to check them out. Moving on, the second most contentious feature of NFT games was interoperability. And I wanted to address this because in my opinion, this is one of the best aspects of NFT games. Interoperability of NFTs in gaming means that assets that have been tokenized can move between games. And let's use this NFT sword as an example. Say we acquire this sword in a crypto game and that sword resides in our crypto wallet now. When I sign into a new game, that game is gonna take a look at what's in my wallet or what's in my inventory. And if that game recognizes the NFT sword, we might be able to use it in this other game as well, in game number two. If game number two was a card-based game, maybe they don't have swords, that NFT might be represented as a card with a sword on it and have its own properties represented in a different way. And I think this opens a gateway for so much creativity. Can you imagine if you could take inventory from Minecraft into Roblox or into Fortnite? And items might not behave the same in each game, but that's okay, they don't have to. All of this to say, this is all really up to each individual developer. So if they thought it would be detrimental to the game to do this, they might not recognize outside NFTs in your wallet as playable. And that's really up to them. We'll just have to kind of watch to see how the developer Developers kind of handle this. So if you want to get started with play to earn NFT games in 2022, I recommend starting with games like Splinterlands, which is a trading card game formerly known as Steam Monsters. In this game, each card belongs to a faction or splinter and players combine cards to increase their abilities and strength, strengths rather. There's also Axie Infinity, which I mentioned before. Axie Infinity is a trading and battle game where players collect digital pets called Axies. It was inspired by Pokemon and like Pokemon, axes can be raised, battled, and traded. A word of warning for this one, all players must purchase three axes to begin playing. So there is a little bit of a barrier to entry with that one. Next is Uplands. Uplands is a digital property trading app and the properties on this one are linked to real world addresses. And the developer kind of has been rolling out one city at a time. When I started, they just had New York and San Francisco, but they're always adding more. So definitely check that one out if you kind of like that sort of real estate property type game. The Sandbox is another one. It's a user generated world building ecosystem. So players create their own land and you can kind of build whatever gaming world you want or that you can imagine. And unlike other games we've talked about, there's no fixed game world, even though all users have access to the metaverse at all times, if that makes sense. You can also check out Blanco's Block Party. It's another world building game. And here players can build game worlds without any coding skills. And you can also collect, customize, and sell characters and other in-game objects as NFTs. Unlike the sandbox though, these items are originally created by the developer and major brands. The players can just customize them. And if you are sustainably minded, you may want to start with Battle of Guardians, which is a great option on the Solana blockchain. It's an immersive multiplayer game that has both player versus player and player versus environment modes. You compete for reward tokens and those tokens can be used to buy NFT characters. And 
Finally, while it isn't out yet, Big Time is an NFT game launching in 2022. I did a video on it here a while back if you want to check that out. For all of these games, these are all examples of play to earn games, which means that you can generate income while playing these games. And if you are interested in joining a guild, you may want to check out Yield Gaming Guild or YGG. Again, I've not personally used them, but they're just one option out there. Okay, so to recap, some key takeaways from this video. Both AAA game developers and indie developers are rolling out NFT elements into their games. Blockchain technology is changing finance and art and gaming is not immune. It is happening whether you want it to or not. And when successfully deployed, NFTs offer benefits to players that traditional gaming does not, such as the play to earn model and the interoperability of game assets. And we are super early to the NFT revolution and not every NFT offering is going to be successful. However, one flop is not going to bring about the downfall of the whole industry. If you remember in the early days of the internet, we had the dot-com crash. The market lost like five trillion dollars in value, but lo and behold, the internet still happened. It still exists today. And then finally, NFTs are risky. You don't have to go all in on NFTs, but it is a good idea to educate yourself on how they work, how to get started, and how they are changing the game industry. Okay, that is all for this week's video. I hope that this helped you understand the metaverse that 1% better and that you have a happy holidays. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye.